Hi, my name is Peach. Let me not waste your time. A lot of people wanted to know how to make the typography that I made in this video. So that's what I'm going to show you today. To start off, I picked the line of the song that I wanted to add typography to. And what we're going to do is mark out our beats. When editing typography, your movement has to line up with the words in the song. But the way I'm going to start my typography is by marking out the first beat of the segment and then mark out where I can hear the start of each word being said. First, I'm going to mark on the audio track, but then I'm going to also mark on the timeline so I can see them in the fusion page. During this time, I'm also thinking about how I'm going to group the words together. I usually group some words together so the camera movement won't be moving around too fast and you will get a chance to read the text. Next, I'm going to add a fusion composition by going to my effects library, toolbox, effects, and the fusion composition. Then inside my fusion composition, I'm going to grab a background node and connect it to my media out. I'm going to increase the canvas size of my background node by going here, unchecking auto resolution, and adjusting the pixel amount so once I start placing words, I have more room to work with. Next, I'm going to connect up my text node. If I just take the output of the text node and drag it to the output of the background node, the program will automatically put a merge to connect those two nodes together. Now on the text node, I chose the sizing and style of the way I want the text to be. Now I'm going to copy this text and the merge node and paste it along my graph by putting new words into the text nodes. Once this is done, I start arranging the words on the canvas while also implementing the grouping technique that I talked about earlier. After I have an arrangement I like, I'm going to add a transform node for the movement. What I'm going to do is open up the keyframe viewer at the top here so I can see where all my marked keyframes are and keyframe the center of the transform wherever our marker is. So I'm going to go to this marker and click this button in the inspector and then repeat. When I'm done keyframing, I'm going to start adjusting the center position to match up with the words. What I'm also going to do on this frame is zoom in on the size to something where it's not too big but where the text takes up a good amount of space. I'm also going to put a crop node after the transform so we can see what the final result will look like. So with this technique, I'm going to adjust the center position at every keyframe I want to keep. If there's a frame I want to unkeyframe, like the one that marks out the word not, then I'm going to unhighlight the center keyframe button on the inspector. Some little tips that'll help you when doing this is if you hit Ctrl F when nothing is selected, you can fit your camera within the viewer. If you hit Ctrl G when nothing is selected, a little graph will come up where you can mark out the center point. So with this technique, I'm going to keyframe at the last word of each text group. Since I rotated some of the text, I need to keyframe the angle of the transform as well. This allows the words to face the correct way when it is read. Once everything is keyframed, then it is time to open up the spline viewer. From here, I'm going to select all the nodes and hit S. Then I'm going to deal with the displacement first. What I'm going to do throughout the spline graph is make graphs that look like this between each of the keyframes. Then I will copy these graphs from my angle as well. After doing that, you should have something that looks like this, but as you can see, it is offbeat. The way we can correct this is by taking all the keyframes in the spline graph and moving them two to three frames earlier. So now when you look at the playback, it feels all synced up. Another thing I did was add a transform node after the crop node in order to keyframe any zoom I wanted to add. By editing the spline, I used the same graphs that I used for the displacement for the zooms. What I ended up adding is a line from the paint node and an image in the background. With the paint node, I used the spline setting like this to draw a rough line and then on each point of the line, I used the smooth setting to smooth it all out. Then I keyframed the right on effect under the stroke controls and adjusted it in the spline graph. Before all the text, I added a merge to add a high socket to the scene. I readjusted her size with the transform node and adjusted her brightness and saturation with the brightness and contrast node. If you're confused or if I went too fast, I also uploaded the whole session of me making this typography as well. If you have any more questions or suggestions on what I should do in the future, please let me know down in the comments. If you'd also like to join a Discord server of DaVinci editors, there is one linked in the description as well as my own server you can join as well. And with that, subscribe and have a good day. I really struggled to make typography that I thought was decent. Everything I was making, I didn't like until I settled on this one. And I know I went too fast for a lot of people. So hopefully the unedited version will help you guys out. So yeah.